The low incidence of large and small bowel cancer in India is often attributed to natural antioxidants such as curcumin in the diet, the yellow pigment in the spiced turmeric, which is used in curry powder. However, it's imperative to recall that beneficial effects attributed to diets are seldom reproduced by administration of a single ingredient in that diet. For example, you know, diets rich in beta-carotene lower the risk of tobacco-related cancers, but the administration of beta-carotene pills does not. That doesn't stop researchers from trying, though. Back in 2001, in a last-ditch attempt to save the lives of 15 patients with advanced colorectal cancer that didn't respond to any of the standard chemotherapy agents or radiation, they started them on a turmeric extract. It appeared to help stall the disease in a third of the patients, 5 out of 15, suggesting turmeric extract may cause clinical benefit in at least some patients with advanced refractory colorectal cancer. Now, if we were talking about some new kind of chemo, and it only helped one in three, you'd have to weigh that against chemo side effects— uh, losing your hair, sloughing of your gut, intractable vomiting, maybe being bedridden. So in a drug scenario, a one in three benefit may not sound particularly appealing, but when we're talking about a plant extract shown to be remarkably safe, even if it just helped one in a hundred, it'd be worth considering. With no serious downsides, a one in three benefit for end-stage cancer is pretty exciting. To see if colon cancer could be prevented, five years later researchers at the Cleveland Clinic and Hopkins tested two phytochemicals, uh, curcumin from, tur from turmeric, and quercetin found in red onions and red wine, in people with familial adenomatous polyposis. Colon cancer forms from polyps, and there's this disease that runs in families in which you develop hundreds of polyps, which will eventually turn into cancer unless you have your colon prophylactically removed. So they took five such patients who already had their colons removed, but still either had their rectum or a little intestinal pouch, which were still packed with polyps. This is where they started out, between 5 and 45 polyps each. And this is where they ended up after six months of curcumin and quercetin supplements. On average, ended up with fewer than half the polyps, and the ones that they had shrunk in half. Here's a representative endoscopic photograph before and after. Kind of now you see it, now you don't. Um, but what about patient one? Uh, got rid of all their polyps by month three, but then they seemed to come back. Uh, so they asked them what's what, and it turned out the patient stopped taking the supplements. Darn it, so they put them back on the phytonutrient supplements for another three months, and the polyps came back down all with virtually no adverse events and no blood test abnormalities. By studying people at high risk for colon cancer, they were able to show noticeable effects within just months. But polyposis is a rare disease. They were only able to recruit five people for the study. Thankfully, smokers are a dime a dozen. Another five years later, researchers put 44 smokers on turmeric curcumin supplements alone for a month, and measured changes in their colorectal aberrant crypt foci, which may act like precursors to polyps, which are the precursors to cancer. And we can see after just one month, there was a significant drop in the number of these aberrant crypt foci in the high-dose supplement group, but no change in the low-dose group, with no dose-limiting side effects, although the stools in the participants did turn yellow. Hi, my name is Ricky Everett. On October 14, 2012, my blood sugar was measured at an astounding 1,200, and I slipped into a diabetic coma, which my doctors said there was an 85% chance I'd never come out of. Yet, just a few months later, there I was, running in one of the U.S.'s most difficult marathons, where I finished first in my entire age division. And being declared 100% diabetes-free by a team of medical doctors, all of whom were completely baffled by what they were seeing, they said it just didn't make sense. 
How could every symptom of my diabetes completely disappear in just 30 days? And they kept saying, what happened must have been some sort of divine miracle. <laughs> well, I just had to laugh. Because while I'm blessed to have taken my blood sugar levels from 1200 to 120 in about 28 days, and I am lucky to have escaped my deadly coma and completely eliminated all of my diabetic symptoms, it didn't happen because of a miracle. Instead, it happened because of the breakthrough research performed by some of America's most well-respected scientists and their startling discovery that the real cause of your diabetes has nothing to do with your pancreas, liver, or even your kidneys, but with a toxic chemical that's floating in your bloodstream right now. And that's responsible for keeping your blood sugar levels high, even when you take medication. Now, inside this short presentation, I'm going to tell you exactly what that hidden culprit is how it's waging war against your body's insulin production as we speak, and how you can win that war by doing nothing but adding a few 100% natural and inexpensive things to your diet. At first, it will probably sound insane, especially the part about eating lots of bacon, which I'll explain to you in just a second. But once you see the science behind this proven diabetes reversing protocol, and once you start using the explicit step-by-step -step instructions that I'll give you right inside this video, I guarantee that you will be absolutely blown away by the speed and completeness with which every single symptom of your diabetes evaporates into thin air. In fact, that's what more than 56,422 other Americans just like you have already achieved by using these simple diabetes-destroying instructions. People like Anthony Reza, who saw his blood sugar levels drop from 400 to 124 in just 18 days. And Chase Pound, who's now been diabetes-free for six months. And Natasha Rolf, who recently wrote to say she hasn't even touched her insulin shots or pills in over a year, thanks to the information inside this video. I'm sure you're anxious to find out the secret that these people already know. So let me go ahead and tell you who I am, what this breakthrough treatment I'm talking about is, and how you can use it to completely eliminate every single symptom of your diabetes in the next 28 days, guaranteed. As mentioned, my name is Ricky Everett. I'm 43 years old and I've been a professional runner since the age of 18. In that time, I've run in every major marathon you can imagine. I've even set some speed records along the way, and I've been one of the lucky few who can eke out a modest living doing what they love. As a professional athlete, I've always been in incredible shape. In fact, here's a picture of me taken in March of 2011. And because I've spent every month of my life training for marathons, I've also always had an incredibly healthy diet, with no junk food, no sodas, no candy, and very little alcohol. So given all of this, you can understand why I was shocked when on April 24, 2012, my doctor looked me dead in the eyes and said I had type 2 diabetes. It all happened so fast. I was outside training for my next marathon when I got hit with an incredibly powerful dizzy spell and fainted right on the street. When I came out, I was surrounded by concerned onlookers and then taken by ambulance to the hospital where they performed tests on me. Even though I was alarmed and scared by what had just happened, however, I was also pretty positive it was just dehydration, which is why when the doctor told me that my blood sugar level was a staggering 600 and that I was in danger of slipping into a diabetic coma, I was left absolutely speechless. How is this possible, I asked the doctor. How could someone like me have type 2 diabetes? I eat healthy, barely have a single inch of body fat, and my heart is in fantastic shape. This doesn't make any sense at all. Well, the doctor told me that type 2 diabetes can strike anyone at any time, and that it wasn't at all related to obesity like the media makes it seem. He said that in my case, it looked like my body had developed an immunity to insulin, which meant my cells could no longer absorb the sugars that were in my blood. Then he told me to avoid eating sugars, starches, and carbs, even though I already did that as part of my marathon training, and prescribed me an oral medication that was supposed to help my body break down the glucose inside the bloodstream. Along with insulin shots, which I was told I would need to inject inside my body every single day, well, if you've been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, you'll understand just how sick I felt as I left the doctor's office. Once you get a diabetes diagnosis, it's as if you've suddenly received a life sentence. From that moment on, you're on an incredibly strict diet, where you're supposed to stop eating pretty much any food that tastes good. You wake up each morning and either stab a long, dripping needle inside your body, or swallow all kinds of big, chemical-filled pills, or you do both. Plus, and I know for me, this was by far the most terrifying part, all those shots and pills aren't doing anything but keeping your body on life support. They work for a while. But ultimately, it's a losing battle, because despite the billions of dollars that go into diabetes research every year, the average diabetic will still die a full 10 years earlier than the average non-diabetic. 
So in other words, as soon as you hear those words, you have diabetes, a countdown timer begins running above your head. You're forced to live with the knowledge that you will die a full decade earlier than you should, that you'll be leaving your loved ones alone to fend for themselves in this world, and that you won't be there for many of life's most important moments, from the birthdays of your grandparents.